when we didn't have the foils, Matt was much more uh, trap dominant. Um, everything was quite physical and sharp. And as he started to get used to the foils, started to relax out here, and it made it a lot easier for him to get onto the feet. Very few people have a, a lot to lose over trying something for a, a few weeks or months. To see a student, admittedly a very good student, beat the current Olympic champion in the single skulls. Hey, it's the bear guy. Are, are you guys getting confused when people call either one of you Matt? No, I assume it's him, because I'm far less important. <laughs> <laughs> I want to thank you for, for taking the time. It's it's quite late for you. It's it's 9.30 p.m. Even later for you, isn't it? <laughs> your, your season 2019 was pretty good. It's going absolutely wild. No one can believe what they are seeing right now. Obviously, you, I mean, Hindley was, was really good for you. Mahe was probably not in the best form of his life. But it was still a major thing to beat this monument in rowing. Walk me through that race. What was it like from the start, mentally as well as physically? Well, we'd, we'd made a plan before. Um, we always knew what we were going to do, which is to go out fairly strong and to make sure, put in like a, a big push quite early on um, to try and take them by surprise, I guess, and just to, to push on from there. Where was that push? It was after about... Three minutes, maybe? Yeah, we, we kind of... So we did a lot of work off Jules. Um, we were measuring Jules with uh, the NK M power lock. And we'd worked out Matt's uh, pretty much peak Jules that he could race at. So that we knew if we went above that, then we, we just... It wouldn't work. So we kind of came up with a plan of uh, a set racing start that we'd watched his racing starts. And we wanted ours to last potentially five to ten strokes longer than his do and then settle on to Matt's racing jewels, and then at three minutes we were going to put a Hail Mary push in and that was either going to be the end of Matt's race yeah. or the making of it um, and it just happened that we came, well, he came out the other side of that push and uh, we links up. Yeah, certainly wasn't expecting to, to get that far up and to keep pushing up as well further on the race. Uh, I mean, we worked out like to perfection almost because I was hanging off by the end of it but luckily we'd already got enough distance that I could just hang on to get through the line. Um, but yeah, always at the back of my mind was thinking he, uh, he's going to come back, he's going to come back with his his uh, famous finish, but luckily not. How did the season 2019 continue for you? So after Henley, uh, I had the USA European University Championships in Jönköping in Sweden, um, which was always on the, on the agenda since... Um, coming second in the Bucks, which is the British University Champs, back in May. So that was we targeted that Bucks quite early on to, to get a medal in that. And having done that, got gained selection for USA, um, which was quite late on in the season. So after Henley, uh, I had a, a short break because USA was so late. Uh, and then we were training all the way through to the beginning of September for USA. We also had the home countries. Yeah, and we had the home countries as well, which is really good to get some crew boat, yeah. crew boat racing as, as well as uh, just being in the single. Yeah, USA was a really good event as well. Uh, really well organised. Um, my first sort of international um, competition after Henley, my first one abroad, really. Um, conditions weren't the best and it wasn't, <laughs> the, it wasn't the best result. Uh, what we were hoping, but um, I think that's because I'm still fairly new to the sport, so... Uh, get thrown off a bit more easily in choppy conditions. <laughs> Tell me a bit about where you come from. How long have you been rowing? How old are you now? Um, what's your experience? Yeah, so I'm 24. Um, I only started rowing four years ago when I went to university at Leeds. Um, before that, I was a swimmer back at home and while, all whilst, I, whilst I was going to school. Did swimming at quite a high level, um, going to nationals every year, but never really much more than that. And I'd say I probably peaked when I was 12, 11, 12, 13 uh, in swimming. Um, so when I went to university, I wanted to try something new. And I knew I had the kind of height advantage for rowing. So that's why I tried it out. I did um, 
two years with the university rowing team, mainly sweeping, and then applied to get on the GB Start program, which is um, what what Matt is the coach, our coach of, um, and I've been on that for two years. You're talking about the height advantage. How tall are you? Uh, 198. What, what's your weight right now in kilos? Around 100 kilos. Uh, I yeah, when I started this two years ago. Um, I'd say I was around low 90s, about 90 kilos, so we definitely put on a bit of weight to, to try and get some more power in the rowing. When did you guys meet and started to work together? About two years ago now. Yeah. This is our third season together. Um, when Matt came into the program, he, we, we test um, height, arm span and some anthro. We also test uh, their, their work that they can do uh, in Newtons on a, a special machine. And then we test their aerobic capacity and Matt, um, I was going through the records the other day, ironically, has, from what I can see, the largest aerobic score that we've ever recorded uh, on the start program. And it's been going for many years now. So he always had a big engine, um, but was terrible at rowing. <laughs> so we've yeah. just been working that side of things, really. Uh, and not too power. good on the power front either. Yeah. <laughs> so we've just been building the power up over the last two seasons. And, and just going right back to basics with rowing uh, in the single. And um, if you ever want any funny videos of him, I can send you plenty of him falling in. Um, but we're starting to get to a platform now where he can apply that aerobic capacity to the water, um, which is quite exciting. It reminds me a bit of Oli Tyler, the German. Also a swimmer before, never quite top, but also good, good, a, sw a good swimmer. A bit of a role model for us, really. Um, we've talked about him okay. before in the past and how he's turns the sport incredibly well. Um, it's really noticeable how smooth he is and, and how his technique is still improving um, and he's just getting faster and faster. So it's something that we kind of try and model ourselves a little bit on um, and see if we can make some lessons learned from him. Um, I can imagine if we were to test him, it would be even more phenomenal Yeah, because <laughs> that guy's an absolute beast. <laughs> but um, it's yeah. a similar story. I think it was late 2019, Matt, you and I were in contact about Randall Foyles. How did you come across them and, and why was it interesting for you to try it out? To be honest, I'm one of those kind of nerdy guys that just always searches for things. Um, and mm -hmm. I came across them. I was looking into, I was just thinking in my head, how can we try some more things out whilst Matt's still slightly under the radar? There's still a chance for us mm -hmm. to take some risks. So I started to look into blade design. I came across a couple of different process ideas at the time. I thought, well, okay, these Randall Falls are, are pretty available now, so we could buy a set and rig them up, stick them on the telemetry and, and, and see what some of the hype's about a little bit. Um, I had a chat with Matt. Matt usually is pretty open to taking a risk, yeah. so that's what we did. Um, and then we started having those conversations about, okay, well, how do we make this work biomechanically? Because it affects a few things. Um, and we better play around with it and we think we've got them worked out, um, but there's still a few teething issues that we're trying to work through at the same yeah. time. I think there were some pitching issues because you guys roll with the Empire Orlock. You cannot adjust the pitch on this system. We zeroed the blade effectively by, by putting the blade on a negative four. Mm -hmm. um, and we moved we moved away from the Empire Lock towards the, the peach telemetry because it gave us much more data to look through, like the, the force curve mm -hmm. rather than a a triangulated image. It's fair to say that the technique changed because of the change in pitch. In which way? Uh, around, around the finish, because we, cause we zeroed the blade relative to the water, rather than having a bit of four degree on it, you found the finish is a lot harder at first. Yeah, I mean, the finish is probably one of my weaker points anyway, but um, sometimes getting a bit stuck with the foils. It wouldn't be like a massive issue, but it might stop me going up to rates that I was able to do um, without the foils. But then there are also some benefits that we found definitely from training with the foils, um, such as it gets a lot more grip at the catch and throughout the drive, and also just a kind of a training effect of because it stops you from burying the blades so deep, um, you kind of learn where where the blades need to sit on the water a lot better. So we've been doing a bit more uh, alternating recently between using the foils and back to normal blades, and even without the foils. Um, my blade height in the water is a lot better than it used to be just from being used to sitting at, a, at the height that the, the foils set you at in the water. What have you found so far? So we found we had to lighten them at first um, but actually I, I think if you're fairly strong 
that you don't need to like them as much as I think everyone thought in the first place. So the gearing mm-hmm. has slowly worked its way out to being uh, only like half a centimetre difference. Um, the big thing that we noticed was the the slip figures um, seem to come in a little bit. So the, the grip around the front turn seems to be more instantaneous. Um, mm-hmm. But then we did find that as we cycle through the rates, now this might not be an error of the product, it could also be an error of the rowing, but <laughs> as we started to get above 28, 30, 32, the, the gains and speeds that we're having per watt, as it were, or per joule, um, starts to uh, come down, and around 32 to 34, actually, they start to go the other way. Matt traditionally likes to race around sort of 36 and up, so um, mm-hmm. we're finding that at those raw rates, we're still learning how to make them work. Um, and if we put the smoothie, just the normal Concept 2 smoothies on without the foils, um, he seems to be able to do that again. Mm. So there, there might be something in that down the line of we need to adapt the rig further or we need to adapt the foils slightly so that when we're at really high rates, you can still see those benefits. But definitely in those lower gears, it's, it's far more effective. And since we've started switching between uh, the foils and normal blades, we've actually let some of the other athletes at the centre use the foils. Mm. And we've noticed that some of the athletes that Matt would normally be binning, they're sort of holding their own with Matt when they've got the foils on and Matt hasn't got the foils mm-hmm. on. Yeah. Um, but then you expose them to the high rates and a similar thing seems to propagate. Um, Martino Coretti, he became world champion in the lightweight single last year. Um, he said in, in his interview, well, you, you don't get to speed for free. It's It's... It's just harder. The gearing is a bit harder. There is no slip, and naturally, therefore, you have to work more, but you also get more. You you have to you have the opportunity to get more for more work. Martino said um, the first 1,000 meter pieces he did uh, in preparation to the worlds, he was 10 seconds faster than before. I wanted to ask you, Matt, as the athlete, no foils, two foils. The first five six weeks. And then after the first five, six weeks with zero degree pitch and, and doing the trials with them. What is the difference for you as a rower? What was, what was the reaction from others? Well, I think it was quite kept on, not really kept on the download, but not noticed that much to start with because we were just training with them uh, at Leeds, not really getting exposed to, uh, to anyone else. I think the first big race we did with them would have been the trials back in November. Uh, and they definitely got noticed by a few people, just some people asking me how they are, how um, they're intrigued as well, but they have, just haven't tried them out. Um, we've met a few people that have, have used them, but certainly not that many um, still seem to be being discovered at the moment in uh, in the UK. Yeah, I'd say there was a there was a period when we were first training of just getting used to the, the difference with the, with the blades uh, for maybe a few weeks, and then after that it was kind of um, learning to improve the technique with them, um, but yeah, by trials it was I was fine with them working. They're working quite well for me. I had a really good result at, at November trials, and then again in the, just the more recent one in December. What could you give somebody as a tip who's switching from not Randall Forest to Randall Forest? I think it's just expect to have to lighten the the blade a bit the gearing a bit because um i think i lightened it slightly to start with and found that it was just really heavy really um struggling to to kind of complete any pieces at, um at the effort i wanted to um so then we lightened them a bit more to start with um and that was fine we got a similar feeling to the weight of not using the randall foils um except that it's going to take a few weeks just to get used to the blades and um, just to keep using them and then after that work on kind of making the most of them and using them to the advantage and then gradually just build back the, the gearing so that they are heavier heavier and you're getting more more from every stroke i think that's the main thing but you certainly, should, you yeah. certainly don't be yeah. afraid to to try new things there's, there's no. many uh, very few people have a, a lot to lose over trying something for a, a few weeks or months. Matt, for you as a coach, what was the transition? Um, so we've spent a long time uh, last season 
working around the pickup around the front end. And that was a huge thing for us last season, really talking about getting those numbers down. And then when we got the foils on, it was changing the cues to letting the blades do what they need to do. So we used to, you know, really pick it up fast on the foot plate. And we used to talk a lot about that and getting out the handles, but being very, very aware of when the blade's going in so that you can get the blade gripped real sharp so that we can fill out the force curve. With the foils, if you did that, you compromise yourself a little bit and you can fight them under the water a little bit. So you could force them under artificially. And it, it's been a little while for us to not unpick the way we were rowing, but but just soften off a little bit and let them do what they're kind of designed to do. Um, if you leave them alone and we don't mean let go of the handle or anything, but I mean, you just plop the blade in, it, it grips itself pretty quickly. Uh, and then it gives you a nice sense of, it makes it a lot easier, I think, watching from the outside. When you watch the athlete, it looks a lot easier for them to transfer work on the foot plate without going up top. Um, when we didn't have the foils, Matt was much more uh, trap dominant. Um, and everything was quite physical and sharp. And as he started to get used to the foils, started to relax out here, and it made it a lot easier for him to get onto the feet, um, which he's actually held as a technical change, I'd say. Mm. So um, that's a really big benefit. And even if you're not looking to go to the very top end, I think having a set of foils knocking around within a squad is actually a really useful tool anyway. Irrelevant if they made you faster or not, as a tool they'll make you faster because you can learn stuff from using them as well as using them for racing. Um, I think that yeah, really improved your front end and your, your first half of your drive is still as effective but a lot less you know, waste energy as well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, wh how did you perceive the reaction um, when your athlete performed so well with Randall Foyers at the trials? I, I always try and not get too hung up on it because I think you, you can run the risk of actually just not accepting that the athlete's done a great job, um, foils or not foils. It was reassuring. We like taking risks, but at the same time, it's nice when, as a coach, you take a risk and it doesn't go down the toilet. Um, yeah. Because there's always a sense of anxiety around that. You don't let the athlete know that, but if you're sending an athlete into a high-pressure situation with something new that's untested and it goes wrong, well, that's on your head a little bit. So it, it, my main reaction was a little bit of relief. Um, and then also my second reaction really was, well done, Matt, because yeah. it's a bit like... Um, all the other athletes that you've had on, nothing comes for free. So he's done a really good job of adapting to the new kit um, and then executing a, a good plan on the day. I think there are two steps to that, and this is what I've realized in the last couple of months. Step one is you've got to be open-minded, um, which both of you are, apparently. That's like the ticket. And then you've got to use the ticket, so you've got to adapt and and you know, have the open-mindedness to, to adapt to new equipment, whatever it is, and, 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 and use it to your benefit. And I think these are the two main points where um, you have to congratulate yourself. This is, this is why I wanted to talk to you guys, because these are the two main factors you, you, you bring to the table that many others don't. In which situation are you guys now? The next, the next thing we've got coming up is the Olympic trials in middle of March. So that's the, the kind of final selection for the GB team. Um, throughout the team, throughout the trials, it's been the, the GB athletes generally, uh, yeah, they've been at the, at the top of the results from the, the two previous trials. And then there's been a small group of us not too far behind that, um, that are kind of still in contention, we hope. and. We're the ones that have been invited to uh, to this final trials in March. So, as part of that group, yeah, we've been targeting this this March trials just to try and cause an upset, really. And um, yeah, I mean, I've I've got the invite there, so anything can happen. And we're going all out for it. The the end goal for me um, is really looking to Paris, but obviously now we've got this invite, we're just going to go all out for for the Olympic trials. Any specific boat? Yeah, get the best I can in the in the single, and then see what happens. Mm -hmm. I haven't had a lot of crew boat experience, to be honest. Um, at, certainly at a higher a higher level. So I think yeah, get get the result in the single, and then see see what happens. Is that single spot already taken? Well, nothing's really taken, to be honest. Um, mm -hmm. 
No, I think the, the way we're going about it is we're trying to just focus on the one job at hand at a time. So the first job yeah. is, uh, well, the last job was the December trial. And then at that point, we were focusing on the February trial. But because we've now been invited to the Olympic trial, we don't have to go to the February trial. We're exempt. Mm. So now we're putting all of our effort into Matt just producing whatever he can produce and seeing if that's good enough. Now, if that's good yeah. enough, then it's in the lap of the gods <laughs> what happens with him next. And if it's not good enough, then then we'll look for crew experience potentially yeah. over the summer. And there's plenty of other international regattas for us to get on with. Um, but right now, uh, you know, some people will say that it's naive to think that you might break in this year being Olympic year and being so experienced. But I think that's just why would you ever cut yourself off? So we're just yeah. going to go for it and see how we do. Yeah, another another Henley upset. <laughs> kind of result would be good. We'd, we'd like to either go to the Olympics or win Henley. <laughs>